Where do you start? What do you do? Do you put out more advertising? Do you work on your sales page? Do you work on your uh, email nurturing, email marketing? If you need more sales, where do you start? What's the best use of your time? Hi, I'm Sarah Jane from Amethyst Raccoon. And in this video, we're going to talk about a sales funnel so that you can use that. We're going to give you the overview and the idea of how you use the numbers that you get from it to help you with those very questions I've just asked. Where is best for you to spend your time and energy? Where should you improve? Now, the job of each step of your marketing is simply to get your clients and customers to the next step. Whatever the next step is that you've, you've worked out that you want them to take. So the job of your paid advertising, for example, is to raise awareness of your brand and get more people to follow you one way or another. They might follow you on social media, they might join your email list, whatever action is it is that you want them to take from seeing you you that's that's the job of that the job of your content marketing your social media posts your email newsletters etc is to get and keep people interested in your brand and what you sell and how you can help them and the job of your sales pages or your services pages or your sales calls is to help people decide to buy from you. So that's the general overview. Now, the first thing you need to do in this process is to work out what are the steps that your customer takes to buy from you. It can be different for different services or products. It will change over time. There might only be a few steps. There could be quite a few. There could be quite a lot of steps, depending on the, all of those things. So first, sit and map it out. Think of the thing you'd most like to sell to start with and focus on that. So more of that. What does that what steps does that customer need to take to buy from you? Um, you can carry on and do it for your different products and services as well. Once you've done that, you've started to define what your sales funnel is. If you've not come across what a sales funnel or sometimes called a marketing funnel is, it has four basic parts. They are awareness, interest, decision, and action. So people first become aware of you, and then they become interested in what you're selling. And then some of them become, they get to the point where they've decided to buy from you and they're considering their options, or they have at least decided to buy your service and they're considering their options of providers. And then some of those people take action and buy from you. So that's the basic path. That's what we're talking about. Um, people drop out all along this path. There are more, many more people at the top becoming aware of you and many fewer people at the bottom buying from you. That makes it shaped like a funnel. So that's what we call it. What does that look like in a real business? So let's give a couple of examples. Let's say you have a brick and mortar shop. First, people start to walk past your shop. They become aware that it exists. Then some of those people come into your shop. They've shown interest in what you're selling. Now, some of those people will turn around and walk back out and that's, that's the, the people you lose at this stage. But some of those people pick up objects, they handle them, they might select a few garments and go to the dressing room. They might start comparing a couple of things and um, weighing it up against the cash in their wallet if they still use that. Um, 
they might get out their phone and compare to online sources, see about prices and options. All of these people have decided to buy and are considering their options. Now, after that stage, some of those people will bring those items up to the till and pay for them. They are taking action and buying it. So you can see how more people walk past the shop and are aware it exists. Fewer of those walk into the shop, fewer of those decide to buy, and fewer still decide to buy here now today this thing. Or maybe you're a service provider. How does this possibly translate to your business? Let's say you use networking as your primary source of marketing. Just keep this simple. So first, people hear your pitch in a networking group. They become aware of you. And then some of those book a one-on-one -on -one with you. They're showing interest in what you're selling. Now, it could be direct interest for them. It could be because they want to connect you with somebody else at, at that stage. But at any rate, interest is there. Then some of those people start to look at your services page or pages, or they DM you, or they check out your testimonials, or they book a call with you, or they start checking out what competitors are offering. They've decided to buy. They may have decided to buy from you, and they're just trying to work out what's the best fit of your services. They may have decided to buy a particular service, and now they're trying to decide which um, service provider to, to buy it from. So they, they are considering their options. So that's this stage. Now, some of those people will take action and buy from you. So that's the last stage. So that's what a funnel looks like in, a, in different kinds of businesses. So There's a couple of examples for you. So I want you to pause this video and think through your own offerings and how do they how do they map out against this how do you get how do you fit it into the funnel now i've given you four basic stages but your funnel can be very large or it can be well very large or it can be very small it can just be those four steps you can extend it there may be other steps involved they're just going to fit into these different categories but you could have eight or 12 steps along the way for any particular funnel the idea is that they're that they're taking the next step that you intend. So what are the steps that you intend for them to do? So pause this video. I'll be here. Come back. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Now that you've got that mapped out, what does it do for you? So remember, knowing how many people drop out along the way at each of those stages tells you where to focus your marketing efforts if you want to improve how many sales you make. So let's go through an example. Let's say you pay for Facebook advertisement and 100 people see it. That's the top layer, awareness. Then four people click on that ad and give you their email address to join your list. That's the thing that you were trying to do with that particular ad was get them to join your list. So that's the second layer interest. Then three of those people click the links in your emails that send them to the sales page uh, for w when you share them for the thing that you're selling. Now that could be immediately, it could be six months down the line. Um, but yeah, the, they click the links and now, and that's the third level la layer, um, decision. Now they're considering their options about buying from you. And now let's say that all three of them bought from you. Seems highly unlikely, but we'll just go with it so that I can make the point, right? So now we can calculate your conversion rates at each step of the path. And what we're doing there is we're looking at how many people got to the next step from the step before. So we look at, we had 
four people in step two, four people who gave you their email address out of a hundred who saw your ad. So that's four divided by hundred, we got 4% conversion rate. That's how that works. So what that means is literally that in this case, that four out of a hundred people gave you, who saw your ad, gave you their email address. Now in our next step, we had three of those people um, click the links in your email to your sales page. So out of four, there were three. So three divided by four, we have a 75% conversion rate for that next step. And then for the very next step, all three of those people bought from you. So out of three, there were three. So three divided by three is 100%. So you had a 100% conversion rate at that point. So that's four. Now that will probably never happen. These numbers are made up, but don't think that they're benchmarks. Um, conversion rates vary wildly at all of these steps and will vary considerably uh, across the lifetime of your business, across your industry, across everything. So don't get hung up on comparing your conversion rates to the ones I've made up for this video or to anybody else's. What's important is use, is comparing them against themselves, past and future, so that you can see how you've improved this particular sales funnel. It's also not necessarily helpful to compare them between different funnels. So you may be selling an online course and you may be selling one-to-one -one high ticket bespoke um, services and those may have entirely different sets of conversion rates right and it's not necessarily useful for you to compare those even within your own business at the same time okay you're really looking at those numbers on that one funnel over time that's that's the comparison that you need to make so anyway, getting back to our example, what do those numbers mean? I know percentages um, can do some people's heads in, so let's walk through them. So we had that 4% conversion rate of getting the email address. That means that very few people who saw your advertising are interested. Your ads need help is what that boils down to. Most people reading your emails are interested, though, because 75% of those people click the link. So you would do best to leave your emails alone, at least for now. Start with your ads. And then the third conversion rate that we looked at was the how many people actually bought. And all of the people who landed on your sales page bought. So your sales page is golden, don't touch it. It's it's mm -hmm. literally the, the shining example of what a sales page should be, at least for your market and your offer and your audience. So you wanna spend time on that very first step, the advertising. You need more people to give you their email addresses. If if you so what does that what does that mean if you got more people on your email list if you doubled it if you if you got 8 people out of every 100 to click that ad uh, to give you their email address then if the rest stayed the same you would double your sales you would get 6 clients instead of 3 and that with just getting just that that 4% increase at that first stage. So you have a place to start and things to test. You might focus on writing better copy or using better images or offering something more interesting, especially if what that ad is is a lead magnet, is you know, download this this thing. Um and that is what places them on your list. Uh, that that thing that you're offering may just not be interesting enough to the right people. You might be looking in the settings of the ad manager and targeting your ads to different people. Maybe you're picking the wrong set of uh, demographics and such like. Um, and don't forget about lookalike audiences at that point. Um, 
You may be wanting to advertise in different places. I said this was a Facebook advertisement. Maybe Facebook is not where your people are. Maybe it needs to go on Instagram or LinkedIn or the local radio or a newspaper or whatever. So change one thing. So this is how we do science. We change one thing, we see what the result is, and then we decide whether we're going to keep it or let it go, uh, go back to what we were doing. And then we're going to change the next thing and see what happens. Um, it depends on, you know, if the wolf is at the door and you just really need to make sales and you can see 10, th 10 ways to improve your Facebook advertisement, then it, it would make much more sense to change all 10 things at once and then do the tweaking and fine tuning later on. Um, so it, it, but that's where you start. So we've had an overview of how a sales funnel works and how you can use it to focus your time and energy and money. Coming up in future Posts. I'm going to tell you about some of the considerations when you're setting up the funnel so that you can actually get those numbers. It's all well and good to say, oh yeah, this is how many did it. But if you don't actually know where to start with getting those numbers, then you're a bit lost and it's not very useful. So I'm going to walk you through the nitty gritty. And so stay tuned for that. So that's where we've been. That's where we're headed. Hope to see you on the rest of the journey. Have a great day. Do great business. I'm Sarah Jane from Amethyst Raccoon. Use your numbers to make your business better.